Oh gosh. <laughs> anyway, nah. <laughs> Hello. It's uh, the world according to Ali. Uh, episode uh, uh, 18. 18. We are. We're just coming back from the strongman sanctuary. It's uh, what's the date today? Eighth. It's the eighth of May. Like my brain is proper screwed. Um, because, uh, yeah, we've just been competing in the Masters uh, Strongman uh, and Strongwoman competition. It was fucking wicked! It was fucking wicked. I had a fucking wicked time. Um, yeah, it was Did brilliant. You it? I've got, um, oh, fuck off, twat. <laughs> Telling him to fuck off, not you. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it was an awesome day. Really sunny all day. I've got a tan. Like, I got some PBs. It was just. Like everyone did really well. It was wicked atmosphere. It was just like yeah, uh, yeah. But I'll do a more detailed write up and all that, like you know, usual malarkey. Um, anyway, questions. Uh, Claire Cox has asked muscle imbalance. How can you make sure you are using your muscles equally? I know it's natural to have a dominant side. However, you don't always realise where you are dominant until you get injured. Okay, so, good question. There you go, Emma. Ta! Right, so, anyway, uh, muscle imbalance. So, what you've got is um, uh, a question really about, you know, sort of performance and health. And um, you've got two things to sort of, well, you've got one major thing to factor in. Like, for example, you've always got a dominant side. So you're never gonna be perfectly symmetrical, okay? And um, you shouldn't expect to be symmetrical because not only have you got a dominant side, which is often down to you know the, the two halves of the brain, but also just how you're born. You know, you were born squishy, right? And as you get older and develop, you know, all the process of the uh, you know the body developing, it's not going to come out as a perfect mould. So you're never going to be symmetrical. So you're always going to be, you know, slightly off. And how your body compensates through that will come through time. Um, in terms of like, you know, the injury thing, you can, you know, sort of develop chronic conditions and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, a lot of the time the body's just going to deal with what comes its way um, because it's good at that and that's what it does. But imbalances can, if um, made worse or if they're quite bad, you know, turn into shitty things, right? And I know that's really fucking vague in general, but it's a bit of an open-ended question because you have imbalances left to right. So, you know, you've got your unilateral and bilateral imbalances, but you've also got imbalances, you know, through um, ag uh, agonists and antagonistic muscles through joints. So imbalances, if you want me to talk technical like that, you know, they can run right the way through. And a lot of that is going to be based on lever length, you know, like, um, you know, force productions of certain muscles, plus obviously movement patterns that you've adopted through the years you know, habitually what you do. Um, it's a fucking minefield, right? So, how do you address that? And it's really hard to address yourself. So, apart from the fact that accepting the fact that you're never gonna be perfectly symmetrical, right? The flip side of that is also that in order to address what you may think is an imbalance or something like that, say like you haven't got fucked up yet, but you think you might get fucked up, for whatever reason, right? I would just say flat out, go and get an experienced set of external viewpoint, you know, an external pair of eyes. Someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. Like me, right? And um, get them to assess, you know, and help and judge like your movements, like how you move. Really good example, for example, that PJ's mentioned is PJ in the car deadlift today. A car deadlift is uh, a hinge type deadlift, right? Because it's fixed at one point and you're lifting frames on a hinge and you're picking up a car. And what PJ did was um, she used all quads, right? So instead of following the arc of the, the path of the bar, she picked it straight up. And as a result, when she'd done her reps, she was like, all oh, my knees hurt. And I was like, yes, because you used all quads, right? Okay. And she does have strong quads. Look, there they are, right? The range, so that's the way she thinks I'll just put up her skirt. With her. <laughs> Getting all shy now. So, 
because she wasn't driving back and through, right? So she wasn't using her posterior chain to help the execution of the lift, which made it all quad heavy, right? And so there's like an example of where an imbalance would cause a particular movement pattern, a dominant movement pattern. So you then can try and address that by going, right, so when you're doing certain movements, try and, you know, factor in and think actively about the movement pattern of the muscles that aren't as dominant. So for example, that would be, for example, on a car deadlift, leaning back slightly and driving your hips through more so that your hamstrings and glutes also take some of the load so that your knees don't hurt at the end of the event, okay? So there's a good example from today. Um, but I would say, yeah, get an external pair of eyes to help answer the questions as to why you would do something and then be like, oh, why does this hurt? It's like when a lot of people squat, they talk about it, their knees hurting, you know, and again, that's probably because they have no posterior chain action whatsoever. You know, they're just trying to bring their knees forward and, you know, they so on and so forth, right? So, yeah, apart from accepting that you're not perfect, you're not symmetrical, we're not all beautiful snowflakes, you know, we're a lot of the time born as a fucked up spaghetti hoop and, you know, it ain't gonna be perfectly round or yeah. symmetrical or whatever the fuck it is, right? It's a bunch of drivel, that one, anyway. Um, yeah, get some experienced people to assess your movement, um, you know, help gauge where you should work and, yeah, come and see someone like me, basically. Um, yeah, and if you're not sure, then go looking for people that are clearly experienced in what they do. Because, you know, you might end up with someone who just talks bollocks. Like me. <laughs> right, cheers. We have another question. Because you lot fucking suck. <laughs> and you only asked one fucking good question. And there was that stupid question from Sam Langford saying, why is there a skeleton hanging on the door? It's because it was Halloween once, and it's fucking cool. There, there's the answer. There's a skeleton angle on the door because it was Halloween once and the skeleton's fucking cool so it fucking stays. Alright. And it gives people a sense of foreboding and dread when they come in and out of the gym. No, it's just nice. Anyway. Uh, yeah, proper question, right? So I even answered that shitty question. It's like, for fuck's sake, if you're going to type something out, at least make it worthwhile. Um, I think it was PJ asked oh, no, and Claire, right? Team effort, Team. right? What is the point of them training masks? Now, if you want to, what's a training mask? You might have seen them. Basically, people wear them like that, right? And they've got little sort of things on sometimes. And um, they think they look cool, you know? I look like bird in the gym. So apart from looking like a fucking bell end, right? What is the point? Now what they claim is that it's altitude training, but not altitude, right? So they're sort of saying, oh, it's the benefit of um, training up a mountain. Um, but you don't have to go and find a mountain, climb up it, get your gym, come with you, and then fucking try, whatever fucking bell ends. The benefit of being up a fucking mountain for altitude training is the fact that you fucking stay there, right? People do altitude camps or they build altitude um, chambers and stuff like that. They get a genuine benefit because of the long-term um, uh, aspect of, of the stimulus to the body changes um, the amount of red blood cells, right? If you wear a fucking training mask which restricts your breathing, you are not making yourself any fitter. <laughs> what you're doing is you're making your training harder and that's it, okay? And um, are you fucking eating crisps? <laughs> no! While wearing a training mask? No! Fuck, that'd be funny. Fuck. Yeah, alright, yeah. All right, that's it. To stop you eating fucking sweets and crisps, we'll buy you a fucking training mask and we'll super glue it in place so you can't eat your fucking sweets and then fucking ask me questions about fucking weight loss. Ah! Don't Fuck off! This is one of my five a day! Next you sound time. like a fucking McDonald's employee! Emma, next time, Pringles. <laughs> oh, fucking <laughs> hell! It's alright, oh, nice you... the air. Seriously, you are a bunch of cunts. <laughs> and I'm not sure I mean that affectionately. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so training masks, right? Oh, fuck off! <laughs> Wine gum. She offered me, yeah, I'll have, I'll have a wine gum, yeah. <laughs> wine gums count, because they're booze. No, not really. Um, <laughs> what the fuck was I talking about? Training masks. Fucking training masks, that's it. Right, they're bollocks. Okay, thank you very much, Claire. Ah.
Yeah. All right. Um, nice combination. Yeah, training master bollocks because you're not wearing them for long enough to cause the actual adaptation of altitude training. All they do is make your training harder while you wear it. So in other words, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, basically have less work capacity in the training session. You're probably gonna suffer from fatigue quicker, which is probably gonna, you know, um, cause degradation of technique and speed and so on and so forth, right? So you're fucking detraining yourself, you prick! as well as looking like a prick what's the fucking point unless you actually sound like fucking bane when you wear one what's the point point? and i suppose what's the point in no i don't know anyway yeah they're bollocks right so um there you go that's the answer training masks are bollocks and people wear them because they don't know any better well, fair enough you believe the market but you know what i've got a fucking bridge to sell you Bye!